Manifolds can be super complicated and require a ton of plumbing know-how, but I'm gonna show you how to build a simple one off of your already existing return pump. In our hobby, a manifold is one or more valves plumbed into a central line and operated with a single pump. Most often, a manifold is plumbed into the return line. But depending on your need and your system, a manifold can be a closed loop system plumbed into a separate pump. Here's a manifold in its most basic form, plumbed into the return line with a single valve. And here is a rather convoluted example of a manifold from my water box frag tank right there. It has several valves and several twists and turns. The purpose of a manifold. Manifolds are an efficient way to control several different pieces of gear with a single pump. Most commonly, manifolds power reactors, especially carbon reactors and GFO reactors. But you can also use them for Cato reactors, calcium reactors, Kalkwasser reactors, any sort of reactor that needs water flowing through it. But beyond reactors, manifolds are also fantastic for powering UV sterilizers and algae scrubbers. Tips and tricks for doing a manifold right. The first consideration is absolutely the size of the pump. Since a manifold utilizes a single pump, you will need to calculate just how much flow you're going to need since you're gonna be powering more than one thing. I highly recommend doing all of your calculations, figuring out how many gallons per hour you need, and then purchasing a controllable DC pump that is one size bigger than you think you need. Some great options for manifolds are the Reef Octopus Varios, Neptune Systems Core, CJ Synchra SDC, and the Ecotech Marine Suite of the SM and L2. I really like all four of the options because they have the ability to be plumbed internally or externally. The second tip and trick has to do with PVC size. I got some great advice from a plumber once and she told me the trick with getting the maximum power out of your manifold is to use the largest size PVC for as long as possible and only downsize when you get to the valve. For example, if your return pump has a one inch output but your reactor has a one half inch input, use that one inch PVC all the way until you get to the valve then use a one inch to one half inch bushing to reduce it down. Waiting as long as possible to reduce it down to that half inch will give you as much pressure as possible. I highly recommend using CPEX double union ball valves for three reasons. Reason number one is they are heavy duty and will last a really long time. Reason number two, the valve handle is super easy to turn, especially when compared to its schedule 40 counterpart. And reason number three, the double unions make the valve easy to adjust and remove for cleaning. Tip and trick number four, elbows. 90 degree elbows drastically reduce the efficacy of your manifold. As I've made it clear before, I have no understanding of science and I even have less of an understanding of fluid dynamics, but I do know this, that for every 90 degree elbow you install, the maximum gallon per hour output of your manifold is reduced drastically. Just to give you a clear example, I have a Neptune Core 15 powering my manifold. It has a maximum output of 1500 gallons per hour. I installed a Neptune FMK flow meter and I can report at 100% the maximum flow to my UV sterilizer is well under 400 gallons per hour. That's not great, but it is expected because I have three 90 degree elbows installed between the core and the UV sterilizer. So the tip and trick here is to use as few 90 degree elbows as possible and whenever possible, substitute a 90 degree elbow with two 45 degree elbows. Now into the meat and pudding portion of the video, how to install a manifold. Just as there are an unlimited number of ways to play the game of chess, there are an unlimited number of ways to install a manifold. Sometimes they are straightforward and other times they are super wacky with a ton of twists and turns. But the most direct and the simplest route will always be the best. We are gonna show you how to build a single or double valved manifold onto your already existing return plumbing. First off, this works best with hard plumbing, so if you use flexible tubing for your return line, now is a great time to convert it over to hard plumbing. 
Just an FYI, Schedule 80 is thicker than Schedule 40, but you can absolutely put Schedule 40 pipe into Schedule 80 fittings. The only reason I use Schedule 80 fittings as much as humanly possible is it just looks a lot better, but unfortunately, they never sell them at your local hardware store, so you can either get them here at BRS, or if you have a local plumbing store in your area, they often sell them as well. We are going to install a CPEX one half inch double union schedule 80 ball valve. That's actually kind of a mouthful. This will work perfect for systems that just need to use one single reactor. But if you want a double manifold and also have a one inch PVC return outlet, then pick up this adaptive reef dual manifold. It works really well. We're gonna be showing you how to install a one half inch manifold today, but if you need to install a three quarters inch or a one inch manifold, the process is basically the same. Here is all the gear you're going to need. Pipe cutters, fine sandpaper, tape measure, Sharpie, one half inch CPEX double union ball valve, one inch to one half inch bushing, one inch schedule 80 T, schedule 40 pipe, one inch and one half inch, clear PVC cement and primer, cardboard and gloves, and finally a mask and goggles. Step one, turn off the return pump and drain water from the return line. Step two, choose the location for your manifold and mark it with a Sharpie. Step three, cut the PVC using the pipe cutters. Step four, measure, mark, and cut an additional one inch from each side of the new cut. This will create a two inch gap. Step number five, gently insert the Schedule 80 T into place and adjust it until it is facing the correct direction. Step number six, use the Sharpie to draw a straight line on and between the T fitting and the Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Do this on both sides. This is going to help you accurately cement the T into place. Step number seven, gently send the edges of the newly cut PVC with the sandpaper and then wipe it clean with a cloth. Step number eight, cement the Schedule 80 T to the Schedule 40 pipe, being sure to line up the Sharpie marks. Ideally, you want to do this outside as both the primer and the cement are quite toxic. If you have no other option and have to do this inside, use a large piece of cardboard to collect the drippings and be sure to wear a mask and goggles. Doing one side at a time, apply the clear primer to the outside of the PVC pipe and to the inside of the Schedule 80 T. Then quickly do the same with the cement. Push the two pieces firmly together while giving them a one quarter twist to evenly coat the cement. Hold in place for 30 seconds and then repeat on the other side. Step number nine, cement the one inch to one half inch bushing into the T. Again, follow the directions from step eight and hold it in place for 30 seconds. Step number 10, measure, cut, and sand a two inch piece of Schedule 40 one half inch PVC. Step number 11, cement the newly cut PVC into the bushing and cement the other half into the correct end of the CPEX valve. Just in case you're wondering which end is the correct end, the arrow points in the direction of the water flow. Depending on the gear or reactor you're gonna use, glue a barbed one half inch fitting onto the other end of the CPEX valve. If you are using one of these deluxe BRS reactors, then purchase a one half inch male threaded push lock adapter and simply use the threaded output on the ball valve instead of the slip. Give your newly cemented manifold one to two hours to harden up and then it's ready for use. Click here for the entire My First Task playlist to learn all manner of things. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next time.